Welcome to Keypay's video series on single touch payroll. This is the third video in our series, and in this video, we'll show you how to create and lodge an update event. At this point, you should already have your payroll file configured and enabled for lodgement to the ATO for single touch payroll. If not, you can go back to the first video in our series, which will show you through the steps to get that all set up. You may also have already been creating and lodging pay events to the ATO for single touch payroll. But if you do require any help with that, you can go to the second video in our series for assistance with creating and lodging a pay event. An update event is used to report changes to the employee's year-to-date amounts previously reported to the ATO. You can also use an update event when transferring year-to-date payroll data from one payroll system to another. This is in order to align the latest employer BMS data with the last employee data reported to the ATO. You can also use an update event to assist you with end of financial year processes, including finalisation and amendments to STP. After the 30th of June, any changes made to the reported employee data for the prior financial year must only be submitted through an update event. Update events are not associated to any pay runs and therefore can only be created when an employee payment has not been made. We'll go ahead now and show you how to create and lodge an update event. Because an update event is not associated with any pay runs, you'll need to create the update event differently to what you would a pay event. In order to do this, from the payroll dashboard, you'll need to go down to your reports tab, under the ATO reporting heading and into single touch payroll. This will bring you to the single touch payroll page where you can see a history of all the pay events and update events that have previously been created and lodged in the system. Then you'll need to click on create update event in the top right hand corner. This will bring up a create update event pop up screen where you'll then need to configure the financial year that you'd like this update event to be applied to. And then also the pay schedule that you'd like this update event to be applied to as well. Then once you have those two options configured, you can click on create. You'll then be redirected to the Create Update Event page where you'll see a list of all the employees attached to that pay schedule and all of their year-to-date payment details. Up the top here are the details of the update event. Fortnightly was the pay schedule that this update event is going to be applied to. And then you've also got the financial year that we set for this update event to be applied to. Then you've got two tabs, the Lodgement Details tab and the Warnings tab. The Warnings tab will show you any potential issues there may be with the update event. You'll need to go back to the business settings and fix the errors before you can actually lodge this update event. Then back on the Lodgement Details tab, you'll see the status of the update event is created. This status will change as you progress through the different steps. And you'll also see that you have the option to delete the update event from here as well. You can filter your update event. So you can filter the event by name or employing entity. You just need to be aware though, that filtering your update event has no effect on the information that will be lodged and reported to the ATO. All the data that was originally populated in the update event will be lodged to the ATO regardless of this filter. Now I'll just run you through the details of the types of information that will be included in the update event for each of the employees. So down here you have the employee name and the employing entity, the total gross, which is inclusive of any gross payments, risk, allowances and lump sums. Then you have the type of payment. So this is salary and wages. Then the gross payments, the RESC, which is the Reportable Employer Superannuation Contributions. The SGC, which is the 9.5% Super Guarantee. Then you have any allowances and any lump sums. And then you have any of the tax withheld, which is inclusive of any PAYG, 
SFSS and helper mounts. All the information that has populated the update event up to this point here cannot be changed. There are only two sections in the update event that can be edited and that's these last two options here. So the reportable fringe benefits amount and the is final option. The reportable fringe benefits amount can be entered on an ongoing basis throughout the year or you can enter it in as a total at the end of the financial year. In order to do this, you'll just need to click on the pencil icon, enter in the amount, and then click on the tick. Then this last option for is final. This option should be selected if there are no further payments to be made to this employee during this financial year. The last thing we'll take a look at in the update event is the actions. There are a few options under here. The first one is Excel. This allows you to generate an Excel report of all the data that's contained in the update event. The next one is mark all as final. This option should be used if there are no further payments to be made to all of the employees that are included in this update event. The next one is mark all as not final. This option will only appear if there have been employees marked as final in the update event and selecting this option will reverse that action. And then the last option here is refresh data. You can refresh the data in an update event if you have already created the update event and then further changes have been made to the employee's payment details. Now that we've covered all the details on the update event, all that's left to do is lodge with the ATO. So you've got this option here on the right hand side, lodge with ATO. You'll just need to click on that then you'll see a pop-up screen here for Lodge Update Event. There's a declaration that you'll need to read and then you'll need to tick this box to authorise the lodgement. And then once that's done, you can just click on Lodge Update Event. The update event will then be submitted to the ATO where it will await a response. The status of the update event will change during this process from created to submitting. This may take a few minutes so you can leave this page if you need to. If you have navigated away from the lodgement page, you can get back to the update event by going to the reports tab on the payroll dashboard and then single touch payroll. Once the update event has been submitted to the ATO and a response has been received, the system will update the status again to either successful or failed. You can see here that this update event has been successful. If the update event lodgement has failed, there'll be an error message with a reason for the failure. You can search our support widget for an article that will assist you with these error messages. This article is called STP Resolving Common Issues. Any update event will appear on the single touch payroll page along with any pay events that have been lodged through the system. And you'll see here some details about the update event. You've got the date, the status, the number of employees, and the pay schedule. If you require any further information on configuring your business to start reporting to the ATO for single touch payroll, or creating and lodging a pay event, you can go back to the first two videos in our series, which will take you through the steps to do that. And as always, if you require any further assistance, our support email is support at yourpayroll.com.au.